in the year 2009, on the 25th of June, some of you are aware, the pop sensation of the world, Michael Jackson, he passed away. When he died, he was just 50 years old. Towards the end of his life, he was not able to sleep properly. And he started, he was addicted to a lot of sedatives, taking multiple tablets, still not able to get sleep. He had, he had a personal physician by name, Dr. Conrad Murray. And that particular night, he took some sedatives, but he was not able to sleep. And he asked him to give milk, which is basically called, you know, a muscle relaxant called propofol. So he has given more than the physiological dose of propofol and his muscles were paralyzed and finally after a couple of minutes when the doctor came back he was no more tried to resuscitate for 42 minutes but of no use. He was paralyzed and finally he was put to death. In the year 2012 <clears throat> there was this person by name Randy Phillips who was with him in that concert tour, he made a statement about Michael Jackson like this. He said, he is an emotionally paralyzed mess, riddled with self-loathing, mess and doubt. And, you know, he says, he is emotionally paralyzed mess. And this morning, I want to share with you a couple of miracles that Jesus did in the ministry of Peter. We'll be continuing where we left the week before. We saw two questions that Apostle Paul has asked. Apostle Paul asked, he said, who are you, Lord? And Jesus revealed himself who he was. Jesus answered, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. The moment he knew who Jesus was and what he was doing, he had an encounter with Christ Jesus. The next question that he asked was, what do you want me to do? He realized that Jesus, he is his creator. He is the one who is the savior and the Lord of this world. The moment he knew who Jesus was, that he is the Lord, the next question that he asked was, then what do you want me to do? So he committed his life, and this is when, after the conversion of, P, of Saul, the ministry was just about to begin. But Peter was still continuing his ministry. If you have your Bibles, we'll open to the book of Acts, chapter 9. We'll continue where we stopped, verse 32 onwards. It says like this, chapter 9, verse 32. Now it came to pass... As Peter went through all parts of the country, that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydda. Now here we see uh, Peter, he went through all the parts of the country. Now, till that point of time, Peter was confined. He confined himself to Jerusalem. It was to Peter and the other disciples where the Lord Jesus has commanded, what, what did he command? Go and make disciples of all the nations. And we see the key verse that is there in the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8. When you receive power, you know, you shall become my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of this earth. But sadly, some of the apostles, they were not so proactive. We see this in the book of Acts chapter 8 verse 1. Now Saul was consenting to his death. At that time, a great persecution arose against the church, which was at Jerusalem. They were all scattered throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria. And if you see clearly, it says, except the apostles. But to whom primarily the commandment was given? It was to the apostles. We do not know why. Apostle Peter, he did not step out of Jerusalem. But now the time has come. Peter, he went out of Jerusalem and he started ministering, becoming a witness to the Lord Jesus Christ. Here the Bible says, Peter went 
through all parts of the country that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydda. Now Lydda is a city. Uh, can I? I'm not sure. Okay. Yeah. Now Lydda is a city which is approximately 25 miles from Jerusalem. So it is towards the sea coast from Jerusalem. It is approximately 25 miles. If you look at the you know map, it is written as Lord L O D, but the earlier name was Lydda. Now Peter from Jerusalem he traveled 25 miles miles and came to the place at Lydda. And Lydda also we have some of the saints who are dwelling there. And there at Lydda there was a certain man named Aeneas who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. He was a paralyzed man. For how many years he was paralyzed? He was paralyzed for eight long years. And he was there on the bed, not able to move out of the bed. He will not be able to walk alone. And he will not be able to step out of the bed. He will not be able to do anything. He was in the place where he was not able to step out. There are many reasons why we can be paralyzed. Sometimes it could be just a phys you know, it could be a physical problem in our body. Where when you have the paraparesis or a stroke, you will not be able to walk and you are bedridden and you are paralyzed. But there are also other situations where we'll be paralyzed in our life. We can be emotionally paralyzed. And this is what exactly has happened to the king of Pop Michael Jackson and he was they quoted he was an emotionally paralyzed mess it is important for each one of us to be able to move forward in our walk with Christ Jesus. There is a time that we were in Egypt. There was a time that we were in bondage and slavery. But the Lord has delivered us and the Lord has liberated us. And the Lord wants us to move forward in our life towards the promised land. And that's the reason the moment Pharaoh called Moses in the middle of the night where when he, when he performed the miracle of the firstborn saving the firstborn in the land of in the land of you know in the house of Israel the Pharaoh called Moses in the middle of the night and you know what he said you have to leave this place right now there in the middle of the night they started their journey what would have happened if some other people have decided no we would love to stay back they would have missed the miracles of God they would have missed you know eating manna which God has given the people of Israel they would have missed seeing what God did with the Red Sea splitting the Red Sea before them it is important even in our walk with Christ Jesus we will not be in the same state where we were but we will continue to move forward and continue to walk with the Lord Jesus Christ. We see there was a situation. The people of Israel came near to Jordan. This one we see in the book of Joshua chapter 3. Moses, he died there on Mount Nebo. 40 years, the people of Israel, they were in wilderness. Now they came to the brink of the river of Jordan. And the Lord says, it is enough for you for you to lodge here. Now it is a time for you to move forward and cross the river of Jordan to be able to claim your promised land. The Lord says, you need to get up and follow the ark so that you'll be able to cross the river of Jordan and take up your promised land. My dear brothers and sisters, that there are many things that can paralyze in our walk with Christ Jesus. There are many things that can make us stand still. We are not able to get out. We are not able to take a step forward. We are not able to do anything with our life. But we are like a static Christian, static believer. We were the same five years back. And even now, we were the same. We are stinking. We are not able to move forward. There is no freshness. There is nothing new that the Lord is doing in our life. Maybe some some of us are like that. But look at what the Bible says and what Peter did. There he found a certain man named Aeneas who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Aeneas, Jesus the Christ heals you. 
arise and make your bed. He, here we see a person who was alive. He was able to speak. He was able to see, but he was paralyzed. Some of us are like that. We see in the Bible, there was a person, a man by name Timothy. He was with Apostle Paul. He was with him for many years. And now the time has come for him to take up the ministry and the responsibility. But he had a timid spirit. He was not able to move forward with his life. He was not able to, you know, step into the position where the Lord wants him to, what the Lord wants him to do. His mother, Eunice, was a believer. His grandmother, Lois, was a woman of faith. He had a great heritage. And he was also with Apostle Paul for many years together. But there was some sense of fear. He was not able to move forward. And that's the reason Apostle Paul says, No, you should come out of your timidity. You should step out of the bondage that you have put in your, around you. You should be able to move forward. Sometimes... For some people, it is fear which paralyzes them so that they are not able to move forward. This is exactly what has happened to the nation of Israel. When there were 12 spies who went to see the promised land, 10 came back with a report saying that these people are like James and before them we were like grasshoppers. We will not be able to overcome them. We see one more story in the Bible. The story taken from the book of Judges. Book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 11. Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the terebin tree, which was in opera, which belonged to Josh the Abyssalite, while his son Gideon threshing wheat in the wine press in order to hide it from the Midianites. Here we see the nation of Israel was in the hands of the Midianites. Midianites have come. They have conquered. They have overtaken the people of God and the people were living in fear. And here is an young man by name Gideon. He came and he was trying to hide himself and he is hiding, trying to thresh the wheat so that they'll be able to have food. But look at shall we open to the book of Judges chapter 6 verse 12 chapter 6 verse 12 shall we read this verse together yes and the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him the Lord is with you you mighty man of valor shall we read it once again everyone open your Bibles please book of Judges chapter 6 verse 12 Shall we? Yes. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. What was there in the mindset of Gideon? We see in the same chapter, verse 15. So he said to him, Oh my Lord, how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my father's house. He says to himself, My clan is the least clan. I'm the least person in my house. Now how can I be able to do? How can I become a man of valor? Look at his thought process. He was thinking that he was weak and he was not able to do anything. There was no confidence in the mind of Gideon. His clan was the weakest and he was the least in the father's house. How much of low self-esteem he was having about himself. He was weak and unworthy. But do you know what the Lord calls him? You are a man of valor. How come this weak man still having those thoughts has become a man of valor. Shall I tell you the secret? It is chapter 6, verse 12. Shall we read it once again? The book of Judges, chapter 6, verse 12. Shall we read it slowly? And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, you mighty man of valor. Shall I tell you what is the secret? The Lord is with him. And that makes him a mighty man of valor. Amen. When the Lord is with us, we become strong, we become powerful, we become, you know, we'll be able to do what the Lord wants us to do, we'll be able to destroy the high 
places, will be able to propel and move forward into the promised land because the Lord is with us. Shall we all say, the Lord is with us? The Lord is with us. And that's what exactly what the angel spoke to Gideon. You are thinking you are weak. You are useless. You will not be able to do anything. He has so many thoughts and so many things. He had many questions in his mind. What were the questions that, in, that were there in his mind? He was telling, why then has all this happened to us? Where are the miracles which our fathers told us about? And now the Lord has forsaken us. We were forsaken. We are at the mercy of the Midianites even for our food. See how I'm hiding myself to be able to gather some wheat so that I'll be able to eat. But the Lord says, the Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. My dear brothers and sisters, I want to tell you this morning, there may be so many things which could paralyze us. The ten spies who scouted the land, the promised land, and came back and said, they were like giants, and we ourselves are like grasshoppers before them. And we will not be able to overcome. And they not only paralyzed, you know, in their minds, but they also paralyzed the whole nation of Israel. Just one word. But look at what Josh one Caleb were telling. No, the Lord has promised us. The Lord has delivered from the land of Egypt. The Lord has done great miracles. He even split the Red Sea. The Lord has been providing manna every single day. We will certainly be able, as the Lord has promised to us, even these giants before us, we should not be discouraged, but we should move forward. My dear ones, I do not know whether it is a low self-esteem or else you are not confident about yourself or else a fear or else the circumstances around you are paralyzing. But remember, the Lord says, I am with you and you become a man and woman of mighty valor because the Lord is with us. When the Lord calls you strong, don't declare yourself that you are weak. When the Lord says, I have forgiven you, don't continue to brood and don't continue to live in the same sin because you are forgiven by the Lord. When the Lord says you are righteous, don't continue to live under condemnation because the Bible says, whoever is there in Christ Jesus, there is now no condemnation. Romans chapter 8 verse 1, there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. Let not fear paralyze you or make you bedridden. May you take a step, a step of faith. There may be River Jordan before you. There may be Red Sea before you. There may be a giant before you. I do not know what is there before you. But the Lord says you need to step out in the name of Jesus. That's what Peter said to this man who was bedridden for eight years. He said, in years... Christ Jesus heals you. Get out of your bed. Get out of your bed. Even Apostle Paul says to Timothy, shall we read 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7 together, which is there on the screen. Shall we read it together loudly? Yes. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. This is the message that Timothy required, who was caught up in fear and timidity. The Timothy, Paul says, no, this is not from the Spirit of God. This is not what God wanted you to be like. You know, that's why he says, he has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and of self-control. Step out. There is no need for you to fear. God wants you to move forward, propel forward in your life rather than be in a paralyzed state. Now look at what happened. The book of Acts chapter 10 verse 35. So all who dwelt at Lydda and Sharon saw him and turned to the Lord. Why the people turned to the Lord? It was because 
they saw a man who was paralyzed for eight years. Suddenly, he made his bed. He took up his bed and he started walking. Maybe the world is looking for people, you know, who will be able to stand up and move forward in their life. You know, when you are there in paralysis, you will not be a testimony for the Lord Jesus Christ. But it's time for you to step out in faith and the people and the world will be able to see what the Lord is doing with your life and they will be drawn closer to Christ Jesus. This is the ministry that Peter did at Lydda. Now from Lydda, Peter moves to another place called Joppa. Now we'll, you know, Joppa, the modern day it is called Jaffa. Now from Joppa, from sorry, from Lydda to Joppa, it is around uh, 10 miles approximately 20 kilometers. Now Peter goes from Lydda to Joppa and look at what is happening. Shall we read chapter 9? Sorry, chapter 9, verse 36 and later we'll read verse 40. Shall we read chapter 9, verse 36? Yeah. At Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha who is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds which she did. Now Peter from Jerusalem, he walked 25 miles and went to Lydda and there he ministered. We were able to see what the Lord did to this man called Aeneas who was paralyzed. From the state of paralysis, he was propelled forward and he was able to move forward. And Peter, he did not stop there at Lydda. From there, he walked another 10 miles, approximately 12, 20 kilometers. And there he reached Joppa. When he reached Joppa, there was a certain disciple named Tabitha, which is translated Dorcas. This woman was full of good works and charitable deeds which she did. Wonderful testimony written about Tabitha. What does the Bible say? A woman full of good works and also she was a generous lady. Known for her generosity and known for her good character. But look at what has happened. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. This lady... Suddenly, she was dropped dead and there was no life in her body. If you look into the medical definition of death, do you know when you will pronounce a person dead? There is a, a term called the brain death where your brain will not be active, all the brainstem reflexes will not be able to elicit, but your heart will continue to beat and you'll be able to feel the pulse. You'll not be able to declare that this person is dead. Only when the heart stops and the person stops breathing, then you will say that this person is dead. But you know, according to the Bible, the definition of death is when the spirit leaves the body, you are dropped dead. Now look at here what happened to Dorcas, verse 37, chapter 9. But it happened in those days that she became sick and died. When they had washed her, they laid her in an upper room. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. What is the probability of death for you and for me? It is 100%. If you believe it is 99%, you can raise your hand. We are for sure, we are going to see that one, one particular day. Now, what happened? And since Lydda was near Joppa, and disciples had heard that Peter was there, they sent two men to him, imploring him not to delay in coming to them. So they passed on the message. They knew that Peter was there at Lydda. So they passed on the message to him, telling, don't delay any further. Please come to the city of Joppa. And Peter came to the city of Joppa. And what did he see? He saw a lady without any life. She was dead without any life in her body. Probably if we were called, we will think we were called for the burial service. 
isn't it? But Peter, he thought differently. What did he do? Chapter 9, verse 40. Shall we read this verse together? Chapter 9, verse 40. But Peter put them all out and knelt down and prayed. And turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. And she opened her eyes. And when she saw Peter, she sat up. What a miracle which the Lord did. Jesus, how many people he raised from deaths? He raised three people. Lazarus, widow's son, and the centurion, that official's daughter. He raised three people back to life. And even the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. Peter, as soon as he saw Dorcas, who was laying before him a bundle of flesh without any signs of life, what did he do? The Bible says he knelt down and he prayed. And what, did the, what, did the, uh, what happened? When he knelt down and prayed and turning to the body, he said, Tabitha, arise. There may be situations in our life, near-death situations, situations where we see there is no hope for us tomorrow. We feel, there is, you know, as, as far as this particular area is concerned, it is like a dead area, no sign of life even in our own day-to-day -day affairs. There was a time for the nation of Israel. The nation of Israel also thought in the same way. The prophet got the vision. We see this in the book of Ezekiel chapter 37. The valley was filled with dry bones. Look at what the Bible says. Chapter 37 verse 1. Ezekiel, the hand of the Lord came upon me and brought me out in the spirit of the Lord. And sent me down in the midst of the valley. And it was full of bones. It was a valley situation. Full of dry bones, not even a little sign of life. No hope for tomorrow. No sign of anything good that is going to happen. <coughs> they were in captivity. No sign that they'll be able to come back to the promised land. They were thinking... Our hope is gone. Look at what the Bible says. The book of Ezekiel chapter 37 verse 11. Then he said to me, Son of man, these bones are the whole house of Israel. They indeed say, our bones are dry. Our hope is lost. And we ourselves are cut off. No sign of any life. And... The Lord called the prophet. He took him to the valley. And he showed him a pile of bones. So many dry bones. And the Lord was asking a question to the prophet. Can these bones live? Can these bones live? What was there in the mind of the people of Israel? We were already taken out of our promised land. We were cut off. We were displaced. There is no sign, no hope, but that we'll be able to come back to our promised land. There is no hope for us. Our hope is cut off like the dry bones. But in the midst of that situation, it was a valley situation. There are seasons of valleys even in our personal life where we think will not be able to move forward in our life. It is not a mountain peak experience where we are able to experience, see the glory of God, able to experience the goodness of God. But this is a valley season. We read in Psalm 84, though they walk through the valley of Baca, where there is no hope, it was a hopeless situation. But there, in the midst of that hopeless situation, look at what the message of the Lord says. Ezekiel chapter 37. Again he said to me, prophesy to these bones and say to them, O oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. O oh, dry bones, is it possible for the dry bone to listen to the voice of God? 
It is impossible. But if it is the voice of God, you know, even the dry bone also will respond to the voice of God because it is God who is speaking. He can make everything out of nothing. That's what we see in the book of Hebrews. In the book of Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, In the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. There was nothing before there was a beginning for this whole creation. There was only one thing that was remaining before the beginning of this universe. And that was God who was there. Because there is no beginning for Him. And there is also no end for Him. He can do anything out of nothing. He can do anything out of nothing. The Lord says, you speak to these dry bones. Look at what the Bible says. Oh, dry bones, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God to these bones, Surely I will cause breath to enter into you, and you shall live. And I will put ligaments on you, bring flesh upon you, cover you with skin, and put breath in you, and you shall live. Then you shall know that I am the Lord. You shall know that I am the Lord. What did the prophet do? The Bible says, So he prophesied as the Lord has commanded him. And suddenly the prophet was able to hear the rattling sound in the middle of that valley. Bones are coming. They were gathering together. And suddenly when the bones came together, ligaments started coming upon them. And later flesh came upon the bones and the skin came upon the bones. But still there was no life. And the Lord said to him again, verse 9, And he also said to me, Prophesy to the breath, prophesy son of man, and say to the breath, Thus says the Lord God, Come from the four winds, O breath, and breathe on this slain that they may live. Verse 10 it says, So I prophesied as he commanded me, and breath came into them, and they lived and stooped upon their feet, an exceedingly great army. These dead bones, without any hope, without any life, and suddenly when they had the breath of God in them, the Spirit of God, they stood up and there was life in them and they became a mighty army. This is what will happen when the Spirit of God comes upon us. And that's the reason Jesus said, you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you and you shall become my witnesses in Jerusalem. In Judea and Samaria and even to the ends of this year. To Gideon, the Lord says, Oh mighty man of valor, the Lord is with you. When the Lord is with you, you become mighty in the hands of God. You become a mighty man and a mighty woman of God. My dear brothers and my dear sisters, I want to tell you and remind you this morning. There is no need for you to fear and be paralyzed in the state where you are. You trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Take a step of faith, and you need to continue to move forward in your life. Maybe in your calling, maybe in the situation that you are in, maybe you have to cross River Jordan to claim your promised land. Don't be static in a paralyzed state. The Lord wants to propel you from the state of paralysis into the promised land, to propel you into the promised land, to be able to fulfill the calling that God has upon your life. The second thing that I want you to remind, God can do anything. There is nothing which is impossible with God. How many of you believe it? There is nothing which is impossible with God. He can do anything. He can split the Red Sea before you. He can do, he can even split the river of Jordan before you. He did not only for the people of Israel, but even when prophet Elijah was moving forward, he took out his mantle and he split the river Jordan into two. And even his servant, prophet Elisha, was also able to split the waters of Jordan. There is nothing which our Lord cannot do. So therefore, don't lose hope in any situation of your life. Here, it was a hopeless situation. This lady, Tabitha Dorcas, she was dropped dead. The bundle of flesh was there without any life. But look at what Peter did. He knelt and he prayed and he was speaking the word of God upon her life. And he said, Tabitha, arise. Tabitha, arise. 
arise, this bundle of flesh has come back to life once again. The same thing has happened for the people of Israel who were displaced, dislodged from their promised land. They were there in, a, in captivity. They thought our hope is lost. There is nothing good that is going to happen. But the Lord sent a message to the people of Israel who lost their hope and who feel that they were very dry without any life. They will become a mighty army when the Spirit of God comes to upon them. What a joy it is. We see Peter spoke, but Peter put them all out, knelt down and prayed, and turning into the body, he said, Tabitha, arise, and she opened her eyes, and when she saw Peter, she sat up. And look at verse 41 and 42. Then he gave her his hand and lifted her up. When he had called the saints and widows, he presented her alive. Verse 42. And became known throughout all Joppa. And many believed in the Lord. Many believed in the Lord. What a wonderful thing. Peter, he did not remain at Jerusalem. He went out as the Lord has given the command. He went out to Lydda. There we were able to see many people came to the Lord because of the miracle. From there, he went to Joppa. And again, there was one more miracle. And the net effect is many more people believed in the Lord Jesus Christ. You never know what the Lord will do when you step out in faith where the Lord wanted you to go. This is a commandment that the Lord has given for each one of us. What is that commandment? Go and make disciples of all the nations, teaching them the word of God and baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And look at what the Bible says. What was the promise of Jesus? Behold, I am with you till the end of this age. Because of the promise of His presence, you and I, we are not alone. We go in the power of the Spirit of God because the Lord is with us and the Lord will work in whatever the way He wants to work. It may be a simple word that can change the life of a person. It may be some act, you know, how you are living and behaving that can change and impact the individuals. But the Lord wants us to go out and impact this world. And that's what Peter did. He stepped out of Jerusalem. He walked 25 miles for the sake of proclaiming the message of Christ Jesus. From there, he walked another 10 miles to proclaim the message of Christ Jesus. May we be passionate. Don't be paralyzed. I think we have to move forward. The time has come for us to cross River Jordan and claim our inheritance. Individually and even as, our church, as a church, we need to move forward. Don't be paralyzed. God can propel you. Don't be fearful about death. God can give you life because the Bible says there is nothing which is impossible with God. We serve a God. He is a big God. With one word, he spoke and he created the heavens and the earth. With one word, he spoke. Four days, by dead and buried, Lazarus came back to life. There is nothing what he can do with you when you trust him and come to him. Nothing is impossible. For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power, love, and self-control. Shall we continue to trust in the Lord Jesus Christ, what He accomplished for us? It is all because of Him. There, when you come to the cross of Calvary, He was paralyzed there on the cross of Calvary. Do you know why? Because He was nailed. He was not able to come down. He was not able to move forward. He was paralyzed and nailed to the cross of Calvary so that you and I will be able to move forward and propel forward in the power of His strength. He was also dead and he was buried so that you and I will be able to experience the power of his resurrection, the eternal life which will keep us 
safe and secure in the hands of Jesus forever and forever. Would you love to come to the Lord Jesus Christ? Would you love to commit those paralyzed situations in your life, those dead areas in your life where you're not able to experience the life? Here, the Lord wants to throw and fill you with his life so that you'll be able to be fruitful. Yes, dear Father, we come before you this morning. There is nothing which is difficult for you because you are with us. And because of your presence, dear Lord, we are washed from our sins. We are forgiven. We are not under condemnation, but we have become the children of God. Oh, thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for accepting us and for choosing us out of all the people in this world and for making us your own. You be your beloved children. What a privilege it is for us, dear Father. And we want to come before you this morning and we want to thank you, dear Lord Jesus, for you want us to move forward without any paralysis in our minds and even in our physical life, dear Father. You want us to go out of the dry bones, dear Father, to be able to experience your life, dear Lord Jesus. And we pray, dear Father, that you will pour out your love and you pour out your life and your spirit upon your church, dear Lord Jesus. May we see fresh beginnings in our life, dear Father. May the church move forward without any fear, dear Lord Jesus, because you are our great shepherd and you are our master and you are the Lord of this church, dear Father. We pray that you'll grant us the power and the strength, dear Father, to be able to move forward into this world to take the message into this world, dear Lord Jesus. Holy Father, we pray and we speak your life upon your people. All the dead areas, we pray for your life to come upon those dead areas, dear Father. We may be able to experience your resurrection power in our lives and in our bodies, dear Father. Help us, dear Lord Jesus, to trust you more and to move forward with you. We want to thank you for being with us, dear Father, during the time of worship and also helping us in the Sunday school and also even during this time, dear Father. We want to give you all the glory because it belongs to you and only. We humbly prostrate at your feet and we acknowledge your presence, giving you all the glory. And we ask all this in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen.